Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, spring break was treating you well and you got some time to spend with either friends or family or rest and recharge and kind of get away from uh, doing schoolwork. It's a uh, great opportunity to uh, take a step back, kind of collect your thoughts and, and, and move forward. So I hope you all have enjoyed uh, your spring break and are looking forward to the second half of the course. I uh, want to say overall, a uh, great job on the uh, midterm. I did reach out to some of you specifically with some uh, feedback, but I just want to say overall, uh, excellent job answering the questions. Uh, the writing and answering the questions and giving of opinions was great, uh, along with using cited sources. So I want to say thank you all for uh, turning in good quality work with the midterm. Uh, as we push forward here with Module 9, uh, pretty simple uh, module uh, discussing housing and the impact on the housing market in a hospitality and tourism area. As you read this chapter, you'll find that uh, in a lot of countries, uh, obviously outside the United States, housing of hospitality and resort uh, employees is a bit different than here, but there's some classic examples uh, here in the United States that we'll take a look at. Uh, Walt Disney World, obviously, uh, as you all know, uh, with college program students, they do house them on property in apartment-style housing. Uh, another example up here in my neck of the woods in Cleveland is in the Sandusky area with uh, Putin Bay and um, America's Roller Coast, uh, Cedar Point. They do have on-site housing for uh, seasonal employees during the summer. Colorado has a lot of seasonal uh, on on-site quarters for staff and then the cruise ship industry obviously has places for the crew uh, to sleep on the ship so some really really good examples and some commentary on the housing market housing of employees and such again i'm going to keep this module quick because you all have been coming back off spring break and are getting back into the uh the, the groove of of doing uh your schoolwork so Again, I'm going to keep this extremely brief. Uh, one thing I do want to mention in, in this module that's probably going to be the biggest takeaway, and we will have some more discussions on this, uh, is timeshares. Uh, you all have heard of timeshares. It's when um, customers are able to purchase or buy into uh, a building or a resort and then use them uh, a certain time uh, of the year. Uh, con uh, timeshares can be very, very controversial. A lot of anecdotal data here, uh, but the people I've talked to in the industry either love timeshares or they hate timeshares. And I think with the uh, impacts of the pandemic and then also the emergence of services like Airbnb and other features like that, you know, kind of uh, ride share or peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, renting out of homes and things like that will have a big impact on the timeshare industry. I uh, seem to always work it in. You all know this by now. Um, Walt Dis the Walt Disney Company goes through great lengths to make sure that the Disney Vacation Club program is not viewed as timeshare. So I would uh, pay a lot of attention to that uh, because it's very interesting how Disney's been able to rebrand basically a timeshare, but uh, making sure that guests or potential customers or investors in the properties do not think it's a timeshare, so I find that very, very interesting. Uh, anyway, chapter nine, uh, module nine in the book is a, is extremely quick read, uh, so please enjoy it. Uh, please make sure that we're answering the uh, homework questions and in the discussion. Uh, please also, since the beginning of the course, make sure that we are posting a discussion and responding to two of your peers. Uh, would like to see some more uh, robust discussion in the discussion groups. Uh, with you all as a class. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out. And as always, thank you very much for your time. Have a great day.